Well, good morning. Welcome to Spring Hill Avenue UMC, worshiping at Westside. It is a joy to be in worship with each and every one of you on this uh, beautiful, albeit scorching hot, unbearably hot, why is it so hot in Mobile morning? As we jump into worship during this time, I want to invite you to stand as you are able or in spirit, and let us join together in the greeting and opening prayer, which can be found in your bulletins. O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth! You have set your glory above the heavens. We ask, what are human beings that you are mindful of us, mortals that you care for us? Amen. Let us pray. Mighty God, who is both one and three, we praise you as God above us, God beside us, and God within us. We come before you in worship and gratitude as our creator and provider of all good things. We acknowledge that our relationship with you in all three persons brings and ends on your side of the equation beginning with your devotion and not our own, beginning with your wisdom and not our own. We come into relationship resting on your grace-filled love and not our intermittent efforts to be faithful in our love for you. Bless our time together this day that we might have a transformational impact in the world when we leave this place. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. In this time I want to invite you to turn in your hymnals to number 61 and let us sing together, Come Thou Almighty King. Once again, I do want to welcome you to Spring Hill Avenue UMC, worshiping at Westside. Another interesting Sunday here, and we do continue to solicit your prayers for uh, both our pianist and our organist, Donna and Becky, who are continuing to recover uh, from various injuries and ailments that are afflicting them during this time. Please be in prayer for them. Uh, and. You know, this is one of those weird Sundays where I just we just kind of piece things together with music, and uh, hopefully next Sunday we'll be back on track because I spent every single day this week calling possible musicians, and it's a difficult time to find musicians for the church. So uh, be in prayer for that as well. Uh, but we do have a couple of announcements to remind you about during this time. Uh, the first is that uh, we will be bringing back choir practice. 
This Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m., we will be having choir practice here in the sanctuary. Uh, Orlin Thomas is going to be leading us. Uh, we thought for a second he wasn't going to be able to be here this Wednesday, but he is going to be able to be here this Wednesday. So we will be having choir practice this Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. right here and bringing our choir back together. So if you're interested in being a part of that, join this Wednesday evening uh, and also Sunday mornings at 9.45 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Speaking of Sunday mornings, we do have a Sunday school class that is meeting in the fellowship hall at 9 a.m. on Sundays. All are invited to attend that. Uh, we do have two Bible studies that are going on right now, a Sunday evening Bible study which is looking at the books of uh, Daniel and a Tuesday morning Bible study that is looking at the books of 1st and 2nd Kings. However, neither of these Bible studies will be meeting this week, uh, for reasons I'll explain in just a moment. So we'll be bringing those back next week, Sunday evening at 6 o'clock p.m. Uh, for Daniel, Tuesday mornings at 10.30 a.m. for 1st and 2nd Kings. The reason why we're not having those this week is because this afternoon begins annual conference for the United for the Alabama West Florida Conference of the United Methodist Church. This is something that, as the name suggests, happens annually. Typically it happens one week earlier. We should have had it last week, uh, but our bishop is the bishop of two different conferences. Be in prayer for him. My goodness, he's had to put up with too much already. Uh, but so we're having, to, he's having to balance two different conferences. So our annual conference is this week, starting this evening, which means right after worship, uh, Krista and I are gonna be driving up to Montgomery and we'll be there for the majority of the week. Uh, be in prayer for all of those attending annual conference. Uh, other annual conferences have found this year to be particularly contentious. Uh, we are hoping that it's not going to be such for our annual conference, but anything is possible at annual conference. And if you're interested in seeing uh, how that unfolds or just want to keep track of it, you can watch the live stream. Uh, it's available on the conference website, which is awfumc.org. And as soon as you pull it up, it's going to be the very first thing you see on the page. So if you want to keep track of that, opening worship starts this evening at 6 o'clock p.m. And then throughout the next couple of days through Wednesday, there will be various things going on that you can keep track of there. And I will have a full report for you afterwards whenever we get back from that. Um, however, even though there's not much going on this week, the coming weeks have a lot that they are going to be holding. Uh, so starting this coming Saturday... June 18th, we will be having a memorial service for Catherine Simon, the aunt of our own Desiree Clark. It's going to be here. Uh, there's going to be a visitation from uh, 10 to 11 a.m., followed by the service at 11 a.m., and a reception to follow that. Uh, we do have a different mission, pro well, a new mission project this month and a combined mission project this month. So. During the month of June, we are collecting coloring books for the uh, USA Women's and Children's Hospital, and we are collecting NIV and KJV Bibles for Metro Jail. So both of those can be brought up to the church anytime during the week or on Sundays, and we have a collection box available in the fellowship hall. Uh, not next Sunday, but the following Sunday, June 26th, is our next youth event. And this one's a special one because it's a pool party. <laughs> We're going to be having a pool party at, uh, at Lynn Merchant's house uh, right after worship. So come dressed in your swimming best. <laughs> and, uh, and we'll be going straight from here over there and lunch will be provided. And if uh, you're not here to be able to get uh, drenched in water for that Sunday, the following Sunday, July 3rd, is going to be our uh, Independence Day celebration that we do every year that we'll be finally bringing it back this year after COVID times. And so Sunday, July 3rd, we'll be back over at Spring Hill Avenue UMC in the lawn over there. And we're going to be grilling out and going to have some games and a water balloon fight because who doesn't love a good water balloon fight? Right, Marshall? I see that face. <laughs> Uh, so, super excited for all of those things that are going on. Uh, we also have a uh, couple of other things just to, to let you know about, and that is that uh, we, this coming Tuesday, we have a community action group meeting that meets here at 6 o'clock p.m. Uh, you can hear from various members of our community about what's going on in, uh, in the world around us. And then uh, you might notice that there is a, uh, a very special handout uh, in your 
bulletins this Sunday. And if you were, yes, and if you were to see that, you will see that it talks about life groups. So uh, we finished up last week our uh, series on the life of a disciple and unpacking what it looks like to live that life. And, uh, and one way that we're going to be really living into this is by joining life groups. These are small groups that you can join to be able to uh, be a part of that learning, intentionality, fellowship, and enthusiasm. Uh, this form that's in there is one that just helps us know how you might like to get plugged into a life group, what you're interested in, the people that you want to uh, be growing alongside. And so you can fill out that form and you can either drop it in the offering plate if you would like, or, uh, or just hand deliver it to me after service, or leave it in your seat, whatever's most convenient for you. We'll collect those, and we're going to start assembling those life groups based on people's interests and, uh, and get those started here very soon. So we're looking forward to, uh, to all that that holds for us. So I think that might actually be all of the announcements that I have this morning. And so, uh, during this time, I want to invite you to stand as you are able or in spirit, and let us join together affirming our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. seated. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the gospel according to John chapter 16 verses 12 through 15. Hear now the word of the Lord. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you all the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. And together we say, thanks be to God. Amen. In this time, as in true United Methodist fashion, I want to invite you once again to stand as you are able or in spirit and turn to number 393 in your hymnal as we sing together, Spirit of the Living God, Fall Afresh on Me. seated. 
During this time, as we prepare to present our tithes and offerings, I do want you to know that your giving does make a difference in the life of this church. For it is by your generosity that we continue to support various ministries uh, throughout the globe and our community. It is also by your generosity that, uh, that our annual conference, which is happening this week, is able to make uh, such incredible progress in the life of the church to be decisive, uh, to, make, to take action on behalf of uh, the ministry of the United Methodist Church to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And so your giving does make a difference. I want to offer you this reminder from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, which says, Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly nor under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. I want to remind you that your giving can be done online at shaumc.org, by mail to our P.O. Box number 7097, by our text to give option, texting 251-244-2706, and also using the credit card kiosk available in the lobby. And with that being said, let us go to the Lord together in prayer. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for the many blessings which you have poured out upon us, both seen and unseen. Now, as we return a portion of those blessings back to you, we ask that you would bless both the gift and the giver, that each might be used to glorify and magnify your name among the earth, and that by our generosity we might see the world transformed. We ask this in your perfect and holy name. Amen. told you it was going to be an interesting Sunday with the music. <laughs> That's what happens when you leave me in control of it. <sighs> well, for this morning's children's moment, kids, y'all can stay exactly where you are uh, so long as you're able to see what I have here. Does anybody know what this is? What's that? <laughs> I have no idea what y'all are saying. <laughs> What's that? It's like a Celtic credit. Yes, it's the, it's the Celtic uh, symbol that uh, has been used for, for uh, centuries to uh, describe the Trinity. So today is Trinity Sunday. This is a Sunday in the life of the church in which we celebrate the fact that we worship a God who is three in one and one in three. And it doesn't make much sense because, well, one does not equal three in math, and three does not equal one. Uh, so it's, it's horribly confusing. And so for 2,000 years, people have been trying to describe how on earth this is possible. And uh, one of the ways that it has been done uh, is through metaphors and symbols like this. So 
I really like this uh, symbol because of the way that it is drawn. And it's kind of like a, uh, a uh, maze, like if you were to follow a maze around, it keeps looping around and around and around infinitely. There is no end to it, which is just really beautiful about it. Uh, but one way that uh, we have described God as being three in one, uh, and one in three, we have the Father, we have the Son, and we have the Holy Spirit. And we talk about these three members of the Trinity, uh, but they are all one person. Three persons, one person. One person, three persons. Again, horribly confusing. Uh, but we talk about the love that is between them. Uh, 1 John tells us that God is love. And so what better way to describe the Trinity than to talk about love. So in the, I'm going to try to do this with this marker here. I'm going to try to do it backwards. This is going to be embarrassing. Uh, the father loves the son. And the son loves the father. And all of the love that the father has is for the son and all of the love that the Son has is for the Father. The Father loves the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit loves the Father. And all of the love that the Father has is for the Holy Spirit. And all of the love that the Holy Spirit has is for the Father. The Son loves the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit loves the Son, and all of the love that the Son has is for the Holy Spirit, and all of the love that the Holy Spirit has is for the Son. And so, all of them are in this perfect relationship of love that goes around and around and around endlessly but there's one thing that's missing from this picture. Can you guess what it is? Us, that's right, you. Right in the middle here. Have you ever had to write upside down and backwards? I already have terrible handwriting. You are right there in the middle of it all because all of the love that the Father has is for you. And all of the love that the Son has is for you. And all of the love that the Holy Spirit has is for you. And so what we see here is that God is love. And God in three persons is described by love. And it is this perfect love that makes up the Trinity. And it is this perfect love that is all for you. Now if that makes sense to you, then you are so much smarter than I ever could be because it's still horribly confusing to me because the math doesn't add up and I really like math. But the beautiful thing is that love doesn't have to make sense. It's just for you. So will you pray with me this morning? Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for your love. Thank you for being here for us. As Father, as Son, as Holy Spirit, may we learn to love as you love us. Amen. All right. Well, thank you so much. We'll be picking back up Kids Shine next week as we, you know, everybody's out of town these days. It's summer. I guess that's just what happens in summertime. People go and do things. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's awesome. But... Next week, we'll be coming back to Kids Shine. So, let us go to the Lord together in prayer. God, we come before you during this time to celebrate that you are beyond all reason. You are beyond all logic. You are beyond all that we could ever imagine. And if it were not so, you would not be God. 
For only the true God can be beyond what we could ever imagine, what we could ever describe. And the best part is that it's all summed up in your love for us. Your love that is perfected in between yourself as three in one. Your love that you have called us to be a part of and to take with us all of our days. Now, in this time, ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts on your words be good and pleasing and acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Okay, so it's Trinity Sunday, and we just talked a little bit about the Trinity, uh, but it's still difficult to talk about the Trinity. And because it's difficult to talk about the Trinity and because it doesn't quite make sense, we often don't talk about the Trinity in the life of the church. We'll, we'll talk about the Trinity insofar as it's part of the liturgy, like in our communion or baptism liturgy, or insofar as it's part of the hymns, uh, like the hymns that we've, uh, that we've sung today and still have to sing. Uh, but to actually talk about the triune God, three in one and one in three, it doesn't quite make sense. And so, We've tried to have it make sense over the years. Uh, we've used many different analogies to try to make sense of the Trinity. How on earth we have Father, Spirit, and Son, one God, but three persons, but not three, but also three, but one, but three. Doesn't make sense. So we use metaphors, uh, which is, you know, it's how we make sense of life. The, uh, the root of the word metaphor uh, coming from the Latin means it, to, to find a way, to have a way. Uh, so that's metaphors try to get us there. So one of the most common metaphors that we use for the Trinity is water. Uh, here's my science diagram. Anybody remember this from uh, life sciences and stuff like that? Uh, yeah, so water has three different forms. Uh, it can be a solid, like ice cubes. I'm one of those weird persons, people, who don't like ice in my beverages. I like lukewarm beverages. I know, I'm super weird that way, so I don't, I don't deal with this whole water in solid form thing that often, but it does come in a solid form, ice. It also comes in the more common liquid form. That's, you know, 70% of our world, 70% of our bodies. We have a lot of liquid, uh, forms of water. And then we have the gaseous form, the vapor form of water. Uh, when it evaporates, heats up to a certain temperature. It gets uh, vaporous, vaporized, if you will. Uh, there is a fourth elemental state, if you remember this from, uh, from these science classes, plasma. Water can't go to plasma. I don't know why that is. It's just weird that way. Uh, so we have three different modes of water. Ice, liquid, uh, water, liquid, and steam, the vapor, gas. And so this, has, this analogy has been used to describe the Trinity many times over. And it's wrong. <laughs> this actually is what's called a heresy. Uh, and by the way, a heresy isn't like something demonic or anything like that. A heresy just means it's not right. <laughs> it's wrong uh, because what this is saying, uh, if we were to apply this to, to the Trinity, is that the Father in the Holy Spirit has one mode of existence, the Son in the Holy Spirit has another mode of existence, and the Holy Spirit has another mode of existence. And that's not true. They all have the exact same mode of existence. They all have the exact same substance. They all are the exact same, but yet there are three. And so this heresy is called modalism. Do you see where it comes from? Modalism, yeah, mode. Uh, so we don't talk about the Holy Spirit in terms of water because, well, that's a heresy. Another uh, popular analogy that came about was with the sun. And it was said that the three members of the Trinity are like the Son. You have God the Father, who is the source, the Son, uh, the 
fireball that is a gas giant in our solar system, that that would be like the Father, that the rays of light that come from the sun uh, are, are the sun, S-O-N. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's going to get confusing, right? Uh, because the idea was that Jesus comes from the Father. The Son comes from the Father. And so the rays of light are meant to be that. And then the heat that we feel from the Son is like the Holy Spirit. Because the heat comes from the Son, the Father. The rays of light, the Son. These two are different. Uh, and the heat is like the Holy Spirit. However, guess what? Ooh, you just, somebody just said the word. Yeah, George, what's it called? Heresy, heresy yeah! <laughs> it's a heresy, it's wrong. Uh, this is actually what's called Arianism. And Ar what's that? Oh yeah, <laughs> Arianism. Arianism is this idea that the uh, sun emanates from the Father, and the Holy Spirit emanates from the Father and Son, that the two are created by the Father. And that's also not true. They are all three eternal. They are one. Not one from another, but all from one. Does it making sense yet? Good. It's not supposed to. So, Arianism. The sun is also wrong. Now, here's probably the most common. The three-leaf clover. Now, there was a man uh, that we celebrate, you know, around the March time. Anybody know who I'm talking about? The leprechaun. <laughs> yeah. St. Patrick. St. Patrick brought Christianity to Ireland and used the three-leaf clover as a way to describe the Trinity to the people there, saying that th there are three petals that make up a three-leaf clover. And this petal over here is like the Father, and this petal over here is like the Son, and this petal over here is like the Holy Spirit. And there are three petals, but alone, by themselves, they are not a three-leaf clover. If you pull off one of the petals, it's no longer a three-leaf clover. The three-leaf clover requires all three petals to be there for it to be the three-leaf clover. And the three-leaf clover is made up of each of these three parts. Guess what? Heresy. Heresy. <laughs> that's right. What's that? It has a stem. It has a stem. That's right. Uh, this, this heresy is known as partialism. Now, I don't expect you to remember all these words like modalism, Arianism, and partialism. That's, I mean, unless you just really want to. But partialism says that, uh, that each member of the Trinity is a part of the Trinity. And each member of the Trinity is a part of God. And that's not true. Each member of the Trinity is fully God. Each member of the Trinity is fully itself. And it, the Trinity cannot be subdivided into parts. So, partialism, wrong. Okay, well, there, there are a handful of other heresies out there that are used to talk about this, but I'm not going to go into all of those. Just wanted to cover the, the most common. Um, and so, what we see here is that the Trinity can't actually be understood by human reason or logic and our metaphors are always going to fall short. So then, how do we even talk about the Trinity? Are you ready for it? I promise we're not going to be too heady the whole time. We're just laying a foundation here, and then we'll get out of all the academia of it all. But the way that we can most effectively, and even this is still not perfect, the way that we can most effectively talk about the Trinity is in what's called the Athanasian Creed. Now, for whatever reason, we don't use this creed, but a creed is just a statement of belief. This is something that we believe. And the Athanasian Creed is adopted into, the, into uh, Protestant and Catholic churches. Uh, it's similar to the Apostles' Creed, but it's a lot longer. And so I'm only going to read you half of it. But hear what the Athanasian Creed has to say about the Trinity. We worship one God in Trinity and Trinity 
in unity, neither blending the persons nor dividing their essence. For the person of the Father is a distinct person, the person of the Son is another, and that of the Holy Spirit still another. But the divinity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is one, their glory equal, their majesty co-eternal. What quality the Father has, the Son has, and the, soul, the Holy Spirit has. The Father is uncreated. The Son is uncreated. The Holy Spirit is uncreated. The Father is immeasurable. The Son is immeasurable. The Holy Spirit is immeasurable. The Father is eternal. The Son is eternal. The Holy Spirit is eternal. And yet, there are not three beings, but there is one eternal being. So too, there are not three uncreated or unmeasurable beings, but there is one uncreated, unmeasurable being. Similarly, the Father is almighty. The Son is almighty. The Holy Spirit is almighty. Yet there are not three almighty beings, but there is one almighty being. Thus, the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. Yet there are not three gods, but there is one God. Thus the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord. Yet there are not three lords, but there is one Lord. Just as Christian truth compels us to confess each person individually as both God and Lord, so Catholic religion forbids us to say that there are three gods or lords. The Father was neither made nor created nor begotten from anyone. The Son was neither made nor created. He was begotten from the Father alone. The Holy Spirit was neither made nor created nor, beg nor begotten. He proceeds from the Father and the Son. Accordingly, there is one Father and not three fathers. There is one Son and not three sons. There is one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. Nothing in this Trinity is before or after. Nothing is greater or smaller. In their entirety, the three persons are co-eternal and co-equal with each other. So, in everything, as was said earlier, we must worship their trinity in unity and their unity in trinity. That's only half of it. Can you see why we don't say this creed in worship? <laughs> Take the whole worship service. <laughs> and now I must ask, does it make sense? Good. It's not supposed to. <laughs> and I said before, this is, the, this is the most accurate way that we have to describe the Trinity. And it's still not good enough. In other words, what we have here is this revelation that the Trinity cannot be understood by human reason because God is always, will always be above our reasoning. So, if we cannot fully comprehend the Trinity, why should we even think about God as three in one? What's the point? It's just maddening. We'll never fully understand it. Every metaphor we have is going to fall short. Any attempt that we make to try to understand the Trinity isn't going to be fully right. So why do we even try? This is where we actually get into the meat of it all. Because the answer lies in the implication of the Trinity. What the very notion of three and one and one and three, Trinity and unity and unity and Trinity means for us as humanity. So I want to tell you a story. It's perhaps one of my favorite stories of all time uh, because it happened to me, of course. Uh, but this story happens, uh, takes place on June 25th, 2016. And this just happened to be the wonderful day that I got to marry the best person on the face of the planet. Her name's Kristen Curtis Wright. She's a pastor at Ashland Place United Methodist Church. She's also preaching on the Trinity today. And on this day, it, I, I must admit, uh, I didn't expect to be as relaxed as I felt on our wedding day. Uh, but everything just kind of went off without a hitch. I don't feel like that happens for everybody. But like everything went perfectly for our wedding day. There wasn't a single thing that was out of step. And we got through the entire wedding ceremony, and it was gorgeous, and we had so many of our beloved people there. 
oh, it was just phenomenal. We're actually going to be at that very same church we got married in uh, later on this uh, tomorrow evening for uh, the ordination and commissioning service. And it, everything was just perfect that day. And then came the reception. And I must admit, I don't remember hardly anything about the reception. Uh, I promise I didn't have too much to drink. That wasn't the reason. Uh, it was rather because it was just a lot of people coming up and saying, we're so happy for you. And so I don't remember hardly anything other than two things. One, the champagne bottle was slippery and, and I almost dropped it and shattered our champagne bottle. Uh, and two... That was the first thing I remember. The second thing I remember was our first dance. So we came into the reception venue and we were welcomed by one of our friends who was emceeing for us. His name is Miles. And he welcomed us in as a married couple and we stood on the dance floor together. And our song uh, was the uh, cliche and far too popular Thinking Out Loud by Ed Sheeran. And there we stood on the dance floor and I held her like this, and she held me like this, and we just kind of danced. It wasn't anything choreographed. We did have a choreographed dance that came after our first dance, and that was a lot of fun. But our first dance was just us talking to each other, talking about how excited we are about all that had happened, just being in the moment, right there, dancing. And the music played, and we realized that the song Thinking Out Loud is a very long song to have as your first dance. And we talked about that for a time. But it was just the two of us on the dance floor, and it didn't matter that everybody else was creepily staring at us having our first dance. That's a weird part of weddings, by the way, but it's something we do. Everybody's just kind of watching, and, and we're just dancing and swaying and taking steps here and there, but it was just us. This moment right here, one of the happiest moments of my life, because everything was just in perfect harmony for one moment. Now, what does this have to do with the Trinity? Well, it comes in two different parts. The first is that in order for us to understand the Trinity, we must understand a very particular word. And that word is relationship. Relationship is the word that we have to have in order to fully understand the Trinity. And even then, we're not going to fully understand, but we must use this word. It's the key. And most particularly is the fallacy that a relationship only exists between one person and another. Relationship, in fact, is its own third party. And here's what I mean by that. See, we often succumb to this, uh, to what's known as the illusion of binaries. Has anybody ever heard this phrase before, the illusion of binaries? It's the notion that there are only two options in life. Only two options for you to choose from. You're either Republican or you're Democrat. You're either Bama or you're War Eagle. And let me tell you which one you should be. <laughs> we either have good or we have evil. We either have you must make a right turn or you must make a left turn. We either have the North Pole or the South Pole, right? We have this illusion of binaries, that there are only two options. And we set this up for ourselves because we know that there are more than just those two options. We know that, you know, whether we uh, acknowledge them or not, there's more than just the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. Or did you know that? Did you know that? They, they actually do exist. We just don't vote for them for whatever reason. Uh, there are more than two parties. There are more than just Alabama and Auburn football. I think. <laughs> I think there are. They don't matter, but they're there. <laughs> you can make more than just a left turn or a right turn. You can go straight. You can stay still. You can turn upward or you can turn downward. I know that sounds weird and it doesn't work when you're in a car, but you can. There are more than just these two binaries. It's this beautiful notion that, uh, that binaries are false. They don't, we, we set up this illusion for ourselves. Binaries, this notion of only two options, is false. Instead, we belong in a world of ternaries. And ternaries is what we call the law of three. That there's more than just two. And the easiest way to explain the uh, law of three, or ternaries, is with 
uh, mine and Kristen's wedding dance. You see, as we were standing there in this moment, uh, everything's working out perfectly and in harmony. We're dancing together and just talking to each other. There was a third entity present in that dance. It's going to sound weird, but bear with me for a second. And that third entity is our relationship. There was Kristen, there was myself, and right there with us in that moment, our relationship. And here's what I mean, and you probably acknowledge this without actually acknowledging it, if maybe you have a friend. Anybody here have friends? <laughs> no, please don't look at me. Uh, maybe, you have, maybe you have siblings. Maybe you have a partner or a spouse, somebody else in our lives. Maybe you're sitting in proximity to another human being right now. Okay, that's it. We can all raise our hands for that one. We're in some kind of proximity there. Uh, we, are, we have this relationship that sits between us and another person. And it's this relationship that is itself its own entity. And we know this because... A relationship can grow, and a relationship can, uh, can disintegrate, just like a person can. A relationship can be healthy, a relationship can be unhealthy. And uh, we, we can look at this through uh, Gary Chapman's five love languages. Anybody familiar with that expression? Yeah, a couple of people, yeah. Uh, Gary Chapman, fascinatingly weird human being, uh, identified that there are five different ways that we communicate our love to uh, other people and we receive love. Uh, quality time, uh, giving gifts, physical touch, words of affirmation, and acts of service. Now if we look at each of these five, we can see that these things don't just simply affect me or the person that I'm in a relationship with, whether a friend, partner, spouse, uh, sibling, person I'm in proximity with, they affect more than just myself and the other individual. They affect the relationship. If I spend quality time with a person, the relationship is enhanced. If I never talk to a person, never spend time with them there, the relationship crumbles. If I do kind things for another person, that relationship is enhanced. If there is only hatred and animosity between us, that relationship crumbles. So between each individual and a person that they are in a relationship with, spouse, partner, sibling, friend, proxim proximal entity, uh, we have the relationship. Now, some of you have, are closer together to another person. Some of you are further apart from another person right now. And right in between that space from you and the next person is the relationship. And that space can tell a lot about the relationship. Uh, so the relationship, if you'll bear with me for a little bit longer, is what breaks the binaries of a relationship being between me and another person. Our interactions are not just solely based on me or the other person, but also they are based on the relationship and to seek the good of the relationship if you're in a harmonious uh, relationship. This tells us that there is more than just the, bi the binary experience, there is the ternary experience, that there is the law of three, that there is a third entity. Now, be warned, this is not a good metaphor for the Trinity. This is another heresy. It's called, well, this is the same heresy we talked about with the water. It's modalism, that there are three different modes of existence. This is not a good metaphor for the Trinity. Instead, what it does is, is it demonstrates the importance of the relationship in the Trinity as an active part of our world. The key to the Trinity is relationship. However, it's a very particular kind of relationship. Now, I'm going to introduce one more weird word today. We'll round this all out. And that's the word perichoresis. Perichoresis. This word, uh, ooh, yes, Becky knows what that means, yeah. Uh, perichoresis is the word that uh, comes from two different words in the Latin. Peri, which means uh, around, like a perimeter, around, peri. And kurios, which is the word to go. 
So perichoresis means to go around. But most specifically, uh, the way we see this is that the word perichoresis is the word from which we get our English word choreography, as in a dance. So perichoresis means to go around as in a dance. This is how the Trinity exists, to go around in a dance. And I don't mean a kind of dance that is like uh, semi-modern dancing, like uh, classical dancing, ballroom dancing. This is where one, part, one of the partners leads the other. Uh, this is a more uh, ancient and traditional form of dancing, where instead of a person leading the other in the dance, it's simply each person in the dance making room for the other. Now you see this uh, most commonly with, uh, with different forms of line dances. Anybody here ever done the uh, cha-cha slide? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, maybe the Macarena. <laughs> yeah, so in these line dances, you'll notice, and next time you're at a wedding, this is where they happen all the time, uh, take note of your position on the floor, okay? Because if you're doing the cha-cha slide, you're going to slide to the left. And guess what? The other person who's over here is also going to be sliding to their left. And suddenly, they're going to be in the space that you were just in. And then you're going to slide to the right. And the other person's going to slide to the right, and suddenly you're back in that spot or the position that they were just in. This kind of choreography is about making room for other people. Uh, the dance that Kristen and I uh, were in whenever for our first dance, dancing to Thinking Out Loud, we weren't in any way choreographed to where I'm leading her, she's leading me. It was just simply making room for one another in our space. We might take a few steps this way, and a few steps this way, and a few steps this way, because we have to turn around the entire room because everybody wants to see us, our smiling faces, and all that stuff. We're making room for one another. This is the way that we can most, uh, this is the, what I, what I guess we could say is the uh, most helpful metaphor for defining the Trinity, kind of like a circular line dance. Uh, the, each member is going around in emotion and making room for the other members of the Trinity. It's never about one entity trying to take the stage, but rather it's about each entity making room, giving space, allowing the other to come in. And it's this beautiful flow, and everything just kind of works. As you'll notice next time you're in a line dance, that the person who's trying to make the most of a scene and is trying to get the most attention, they're going to be the person who's bumping into everybody else because they're not making room for everybody else. So my challenge for us today is to take a lesson from the Trinity, to make room for one another. This is, I, I told you at the beginning, that it's not very helpful for us to try to describe the Trinity, because we're always going to be wrong. Every metaphor we come up with, every way we seek to describe the Trinity, it's going to be wrong. Even the Athanasian Creed isn't perfect. It misses a lot of stuff. So instead, the importance of our acceptance of the Trinity is about the implications it has for humanity, what we can learn from it. The Trinity is in perfect harmony, God three in one and one in three, because of the relationship because each member is making room for one another. Now I must ask each and every one of us, in what ways are we not making room for someone else in our world? Because that's the lesson that the Trinity has for us, to make room, to make space for another, to make space for all of humanity and the relationship between us, to exist in this whole harmonious existence, what the uh, Jewish people call shalom, this wholeness, harmony, completeness, things as they were intended to be, this kind of existence as the Trinity between me and you and our relationship, between you and them and your relationship. We are called to make room for one another. And if there's any lesson that we can take from Trinity Sunday, it's the lesson of making room, of making space, of being a part of the divine dance. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks that you have made room for us. 
that you have made space for us to exist in harmony with you, just as you are in harmony three in one, unity in trinity, trinity in unity. While there may be no good way for us to understand or explain exactly how you exist, that's not the point. You call us to learn from who you are, not to describe who you are. To learn to exist in relationship with one another, in harmony with one another, as we make room for one another, because we look out at a world filled with people who refuse to make room, filled with people like us who are just here to take up space and not allow anybody else into that space. And we ask for your forgiveness because our selfishness has led to a world of chaos, a brokenness of suffering. And we lift up to you during this time our brothers and sisters across the globe, as well as those right next to us, those who are suffering in ways we could scarcely imagine, those who are suffering in ways we know all too well, simply because someone has refused to make room. We ask that for a moment we might learn from who you are, God three in one and one in three, and recognize that there is space enough for all of us, that the binaries that we set up in our world are useless because there is room Soften our hearts, open our minds, that we might be receptive of those who we have since closed the door on, those who we have shut out of our space because we have labeled it as ours. Remind us that you are God. All is yours. We are yours. And we have much to learn from who you are. We lift up these prayers as well as those which are unspoken during this time as we pray now together that prayer which you taught us and your disciples to pray in the Lord's Prayer as we say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. During this time, I want to invite you to stand as you are able or in spirit and turn in your hymnals to number 64 as we sing together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty.
got through a weird Sunday today. I apologize for all the confusion and hiccups. And uh, it's a weird season, y'all. <laughs> it's weird. Uh, next week should be a little bit more normal. And I'm going to use the word should because I can't guarantee it. <laughs> But uh, just a reminder that uh, this week we don't really have much going on except for choir practice coming back at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday evening. Uh, feel free to tune into annual conference on the awfumc.org website. And uh, we will be having lots of other things coming here soon. So with that being said, receive now this benediction. From wherever you may be or wherever you have to go. Go to make room for one another, just as we have been taught in the Trinity, God three in one, co-equal, co-eternal, in majesty and in love. And may the God of all goodness give you peace. In the name of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Go in peace.